Daisy was delivered in the... Well, I am living with a steel worker whose name is, is Glyn Price. He works in the slabbing department of the hot mill. Dave, you got a bed? You got a bed? You said you'd be up? You don't want no breakfast again? No, no. You want to get to bed in the night, mate? He lives on uh, a small holding with his wife and eight children. One of his children is a married nurse in Australia, but he still has seven with him. Glyn Price himself, he has a, um, what I would describe uh, as an ideal existence for a man in his position. There's the lovely contrast between working in the open air on his farm and working in nasty sort of conditions in the steelworks. He's a, a large character. He dominates his family. He is really a man that you could love because he, he's always prepared to help to put himself out. <laughs> Mrs. Price is a fine little woman. She gets on beautifully with Glyn. They are perfectly compatible. Glyn and I've been married now 31 years. I can practically predict what he's going to say next. I know when I can speak and when I can't. <laughs> And it's a very, well, it saved a lot of rows and things like that because I understand him. What more than this do you want? Look at it. You can't beat it. Look. Look we knew each other for years before we were married. He used to come down to the house with, with the milk to my mother in the night when I was doing my homework. And my mother used to say, um, I think that little boy's sweet on you, you know. You could practically say we were going together from the time you were about 17. So that I ought to understand him now. I don't like to mind, but he he doesn't put on any airs and graces. He's just a born natural, Glyn is. I mean, he's he's the same with everybody. There is a saying around here that a man is judged by the number of children he has. Well, as I say, in that respect, Glenn should be feeling quite strong, <laughs> uh, since we have eight. Everybody know what the big slump was in Wales, you see, the 1930s, look. I was lucky in a way because I went to a training centre and I never looked back. I never had much uh, bad times, but I know fellas here has finished school at 14 and they'd got married at 22 and it never worked. Never worked. During the days of the Depression, the 1930s, referred to by a lot of people around here as the Hungry 30s, you had Jarrow, North of England, you had South Wales. These were uh, depressed areas. People with the experience of being out of work for seven and eight years and having to bring a family up, they weren't going to, for any small reason, have a strike. I'd rather smell this acid and see the dust there than smell the flowers my father grew during the Depression. I mean, you can't earn fair wages uh, in beautiful country surrounding. You've got to come and have a bit of this stuff. Isn't it? 